So, today we're in the central highlands of Tasmania and we're going to learn about driving on snow. And to tell us all about that, we've got Mark from Performance Driving Australia. So, Mark, what are the basics? So, automatic, manual, do we need to worry about transmission in a car? Look, uh, ultimately, the transmission you have is fine either way. Yep. Uh, automatics are generally better in the sense that you're not having to worry about selecting gears. So, so it's going to keep that motion easier yeah, as well. Right. So it's one less thing to worry about, particularly when you start losing traction. People tend to want to change gears. That can then cause you bigger problems when yep. you're on the snow because you, you can cause wheel spin or roll away from where you want it to be. So cool. automatic would be great, yep. but either way, yep. perfectly fine. So what about tyre choice? All terrain, high ter uh, highway terrain, mud terrain? The uh, the most aggressive tread pattern is going to give you the best traction in most conditions when it when it comes to driving in snow. However, still most tyres will work as long as they uh, you drive accordingly. And that's the biggest thing with driving on snow is, is allowing for the type of vehicle, whether the tyres, the transmission package, the the ground clearance, all of those factors coming into play. And it's really important to to keep that in mind, you know, when you're driving and how you're using the throttle and the other controls. How does it compare to driving on sand? It is similar but different. Sand, sand office obviously offers a, probably a slightly more level of grip um, because it, it tends to move in around the tyre, whereas snow tends to push away from the tyre. So similar, I guess that the driving skills are similar in that you have to be smooth. Yep. However, uh, yeah, they are still different skills and, and it does take a bit of getting used to driving on snow if you haven't done much of it. Mm. And would you lower the tyre pressures at all on snow? The, uh, generally speaking, no. The, the, the reality is if it's quite deep snow and you're struggling for traction, then you would look at increasing that footprint by yeah, bringing the right, pressures right. down a bit. But yeah. uh, again, I would suggest that in most cases, in most conditions, particularly here in beautiful Tassie, that you don't need to drop the pressures that much on most of our roads. Yeah, cool, awesome. It's cold out here, so we're gonna go into the car and do a little bit of driving practice in there as well. So we're in the car now. Um, Mark, is there anything we should consider before we actually pull out? Yeah, so driving in, in these conditions, it's a good idea to warm the car up before we before we head out. So, you know, get in the morning, turn the car on, crank it over and let everything come up to temp so that we're not running with cold coolant and, and cold engines, cold exhaust, those sort of things. Yep. Perhaps leave your wipers up overnight if you are parked in the snow so that you don't have a windscreen that's, uh, you know, covered in snow and you can't clear it. So that does help. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and be aware that, of course, you know, other cars are going to be using the roads in similar conditions, so have your headlights on while you're driving off. Yep. Um, one of the things I remember from living in the snow is that uh, you need to make sure all of your windows are cleared. I remember seeing someone driving with a hole about that big in their windscreen and seeing what they can see, but yeah, visibility. Yeah, not, not ideal, of course. Uh, yeah, you want to be able to see out of all your windows, including your mirrors if you can. So, mm. so keep everything clear. Uh, it does take a little bit of time, but the first thing about driving in the snow is you probably shouldn't be in a rush. Yes, exactly. Good point. Well. Let's uh, get on the road. So the road we're on today is not particularly deep snow. Shh, um, but it's just going to be enough to illustrate what we're doing. But um, what should I consider with my speeds on snow? Like, you know, obviously I don't want to drive flat out, but, but what's the recommendations? Yeah, look, you, you want to be able to cover ground. I mean, you're driving from A to B. It's not about getting there as slow as possible, but as safe as possible. So yeah. finding that happy medium where the car has got good grip, uh, you feel safe, your passengers feel safe, and it's always important to remember them because they don't yes. have the uh, the control of the car and we don't want people screaming they're and not, yelling in the back. They're not holding on like no, we are. so it's really important to just drive at that nice steady pace. And that pace can vary anywhere from 10 k's an hour in extreme conditions up and down slopes to, you know, highway speeds if you feel comfortable. And, and that probably is between 60 and 80 in most conditions. Yeah, and I guess... Uh, going what, in fast, that's probably unnecessary yeah. in most, most environments. And watching out for ice and that sort of stuff on the corners as well. Yeah, ice. And you've got to read the road. Uh, cruise control really is a no-go. It won't cause the car to lose control. We've heard that rumour go around the internet a million yep. times. However, uh, why would you use cruise control when you're driving in any challenging terrain? So right. you drive the car and that way you've got better control, better feel for what's actually happening underneath the vehicle. Yeah. So should I be conscious of anything when, when actually just driving in deeper snow? Um, like it, should I obviously control the car in a different way or is um, it... Ideally you'd want to be able to pick where the grip is and there's two options. If the snow is deep, um, driving in the wheel tracks generally is best. However, if the wheel tracks have sort of melted and there's ice in there, sometimes you might need to make your own tracks because the ice can sometimes be more slippery than the actual uh, 
you know, the soft snow itself. So, yeah. And remember, the snow can slow you down. Yeah. So if, if anything else, you feel like you're getting a bit, you know, the vehicle's getting away from you, don't be afraid to just, you know, drive off the, the line a little bit and use the snow just to pull you up a little bit. It's yep. pretty harmless. Um, just stay away from the edges where there might be big drop-offs and ruts. That's right, because you can't uh, see anything, can you? Yeah, that's right. Um, it's all hidden. One of the things that I've heard is that snow likes sticking to snow, so you're actually better off having tires that will capture the snow in, 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 and, and actually you'll be... It'll be, it'll be easier to drive on tires that actually stick the snow in there. Is that, is that true? Look, I think it's there's a lot of different theories about any type of off-road driving and, and snow driving. And uh, I've delivered training all over the world and overseas in, in very snowy conditions and found that, generally speaking, the, the variety of tyres we come across, they all work quite well. Yep. Ha however, again, like we said right at the start, um, the more aggressive the tread pattern, the more chance it's got of biting into right, the snow. That's right, tearing into that But snow, it's more yeah. to do with getting off and getting getting the, the vehicle moving, yep. perhaps, and braking. Once you're driving at speed, like you said, it, it probably works to have a, mm. a bit of snow in yep. the tyres. Uh, is it worth touching on recovery at all in snow? Because, I mean, if you're going to be driving in snow, there's some stage you're probably going to come across someone else. Is of there course. anything we should consider about recovery on snow? Yeah, the, the, the golden rules apply with recovery with, you know, taking a, a minute to have a cup of tea first sometimes. Yes. Um, people rush in all the time, especially to help people, which is great, but you don't want anyone to get hurt. Remember the road's going to be slippery, your hands are cold, everything's cold. So using the right gear, follow the instructions, Basically, like any other recovery, yep. um, good idea to have some gloves with you. Yes, you it's going to be every, everything's going to be colder, so Absolutely. you know, uh, things might get stuck as well in the ice. Your recovery gear might be you know a bit bit colder, might not work as well. So, like you say, slow down is probably the biggest tip. Yeah, that's the key. And if you, my experience being, if you can't do the, the the vehicle recovery safely, because obviously on snow you may be recovering with another vehicle on snow, mm. you may need to look at winches or other you know yep. having multiple vehicles involved in the uh, recovery to make sure that it's done safely don't risk the vehicle don't risk yourself yep uh, if it means getting a, a ride back somewhere and waiting for the weather condition to improve yep because you only ever get stuck in the middle of a storm or something when it's really bad and that's, that's right. not the time you want to be out doing a recovery exactly we actually had a one the other day where um the tire of your land cruiser was pulling out a tow truck and the tow truck was actually stuck on the shoulder of the of the road and um, as the Land Cruiser was winching it, the Land Cruiser was actually hooked up to a tree behind him. It was actually going along the shoulder of the road, so they ended up deciding to use the winch from the back of the truck to winch the back on first as he was being winched forwards. So it actually brought the truck back onto the road. So yeah, and, and that's the thing, you, you need, I, I did the same similar recovery the other day where we need to use uh, multiple straps to be able to get the vehicle away from the ditch because otherwise yep. you're just basically dragging it along the ditch yeah. and sometimes dragging yourself in there at the same time. And that's the thing, the stuff's slippery, so you just got to think about that. It is, and it's, it is slipperier than mud. Yes, really. It is. I reckon when, when, when it's icy, it is. like you, yep. you can't stand on it. And, and in mud, you can generally stand and or push your feet through the mud. Yep. You'll find a bit of a base. Yep. With, with ice and, and really icy conditions, you won't. Snow, not so much. Yep. But definitely if it's ice. And if there's snow, there's going to be ice somewhere. Isn't yeah, there? good point. Anything else we should think about? Just generally about with driving, stay smooth. Smooth throttle application, smooth steering. If you start reefing at the wheel, the worst thing you can do because you're basically just going to end up having no steering control and possibly running off the road with a lot of lock on which always ends badly yes so smooth steering inputs smooth brakes smooth throttle application look ahead plan yep. ahead you know use look your vision skippy. skills look out for animals um but the key thing is that reading the road conditions drive at a pace that you're comfortable with and that you, you feel safe because again your passengers and you want to get from a to b there's no rush you, you do want to travel at a reasonable, comfortable pace, but yeah, don't take any unnecessary yep. risks. And remember, two hands on the steering wheel. Two hands on the wheel. Try and get your hands roughly opposite if you can. Yep. That just means if the vehicle's moving around, you always know where the wheel's pointing when That's you right. bring your hands back. And probably actually it. drive a little bit closer to the steering wheel as well. I, I find myself control. doing that. I try and always sit in the right position, but when I drive either off-road or on yep. snow, I always bring the seat forward yep. just an extra so quick. Less gangster, more control. Absolutely, yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks, Mark. My um, pleasure. Everyone, if you want to see more of these videos, make sure you hit that like button or subscribe button, and uh, we'll be bringing you some more videos coming very soon. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers.